Welcome to your first tutorial in the tutorial series which I hope to be releasing about programming. Tutorial 1 we're going to be going over how to get the actual executable file which you can distribute to others from your Windows project file. If you've been doing a lot of C Sharp or Visual Basic or any languages within the Visual Studio you might find this very easy but I remember when I first started um, years ago this was one of the first questions I, I wanted to answer and I had no idea how to do it and there was no no videos, no nothing to do it and I had to ask people, I had to ask on forums so I thought, although well, it's easy I might as well make a video, it should be really quick, less than three minutes hopefully um, I'll just explain a little bit about myself about five years ago, probably a bit less than that, I, I made a tutorial series back when I didn't really know much about programming, I wasn't, I wasn't too good at it um, so I was giving out the wrong information to people but from the responses and the comments and the messages I was receiving people were really grateful for the help They, even though it was wrong they, they were just grateful that someone was trying to help them out so I thought well now five years on after I've been doing it a lot more dedicated I've, I've got jobs with programming and stuff now I, I thought why not recreate the series now I'm more knowledgeable and hopefully spread the knowledge to others who can then eventually go on to teach more people because that's, that's the world's developing so fast that it's one of those things which I think everyone should know from a young age. Um, I've been programming on and off for about eight years, uh, more more so these last five years. Like I was saying earlier, I do different languages such as C Sharp, C++, C, Perl. I even do scripting languages like Linden Scripting, uh, which is for the Second Life game. Uh, I'm going to be doing tutorials for hopefully all of these languages. Maybe not so much Visual Basic because there is quite a lot of documentation around for that. But not just the languages themselves, I hope to cover libraries within the languages, so such as the MonoCessel library for C Sharp, which allows you to modify assemblies and such. Uh, hopefully you'll find it useful, and if you've got a suggestion for a tutorial which you're stuck with, even if it's something simple like how to receive uh, the contents of a web page, which doesn't actually sound that simple I guess, but when you get onto more complex things it's not too difficult, then just feel free to leave it in the comments or send me a message. I'll try and put my Skype in the description, which I'll, I'll come on occasionally, and you can have some one-to-one -one help. But obviously, if this channel grows too much, then the chances of that happening all the time is going to be slim. But I, as it's small now, I, I hope it will. Anyway, on to the actual tutorial. Uh, start up your Microsoft Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio 2010 Professional. You might be using the Express, depending on whether you've bought it or not. Um, like I said, this will work with Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp or any of the languages, but I'm going to be doing it in C Sharp this time. Uh, so you're going to want to choose the folder um, on Desktop Programming C Sharp at the moment, and then you're going to want to well, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine Tutorial 1 for now. Alright, once that's made, you're going to have a blank form, with the name Form 1, unless you've had your default configuration changed. Uh, and if we click this green arrow, which is the debugging arrow, or you can alternatively press F5 then the window should open so here you go this is this is what it's going to look like we haven't actually added anything to it yet so it shouldn't look too too good yet so if we stop debugging we that's the, that's the project file we want to know how to get the actual executable file so we can send it to our friends once we've actually made a program well, that's, that's what this tutorial is going to cover so at the moment if we go back to our Visual Studio we can see we're on the debugging configuration what this is useful for is uh, when you get onto more complex applications and you want to start putting breakpoints in to pause the code so you can check whether certain things are functioning correctly uh, that's, that's when you would use something like this and the way we would find this executable now is if we go to the location where we st uh, created our project mine's on the desktop programming C sharp tutorial one if we go into the tutorial one folder there should be three folders there should be bin, obj and properties uh, forget the obj and properties now, if we double click the bin there should be a debug folder if we double click this we should see our executable file at the moment it's 8 kilobytes and if we double click it we should get our executable loading up that we saw earlier when we pressed the green arrow or F5 so if we close that, that's, that's one way of doing it, however that's not the most efficient way as the code hasn't been optimized and when you get onto large projects it's, it's going to be quite a large file so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, sorry about that, we're going to want to um, change the configuration so it's ready for release. So if we click this down arrow here and click on release then we've changed that. An alternative way is to go to project properties build and if we click on configuration change it from it will be on debug if we click to active and then in brackets release so you could alternatively click release here. I'm going to leave it as it is because uh, I've changed mine with this drop down box 
and now we could click the green arrow F5 but what I like to do is go to the build tooltip or menu items or even uh, on the drop down menu I'm going to want to click build solution or F6 and as down here you should see it says build succeeded Ooh, underneath there sorry about that and once that's happened if we go back to our folder click on the tutorial one again inside bin this time there should be another folder this time called release we click it as another uh, executable here and if you remember the old one was 8 kilobytes this time this one's 7 kilobytes because it's been optimized whereas if we click it the same thing still happens it opens up successfully and we can now send that across to other people um, I know this is a really simple tutorial I hope it's helped the people that was looking for this uh, solution out uh, keep tuned for my next one I'm going to be going through changing the icons it's going to start slow but eventually we'll pick up if you've got any suggestions then feel free to leave them in the comment section or like and subscribe, that'd be great. Right, thanks very much. Uh, keep practicing.